Hello, everyone. My name is Art Mannion, and along with my Framing Working Group co-chair, Michelle Jump, we're going to discuss uh, with you today some of the uh, software bill of materials framing work that we've been doing as part of the overall NTIA software transparency uh, process. Michelle and I are the co-chairs of the Framing Working Group. Um, we've been meeting almost weekly for coming up on two years now, and we're going to talk to you today about most of that first year, which we call phase one. Uh, our role in the Framing Working Group is to examine concepts and models and issues that really apply to the entire multi-stakeholder process. Thanks, Art. This is Michelle Jump, and I am going to talk a bit about um, our objective for phase one. The objective for phase one of the NTI framing group was to provide a recommended format and suggested content for a minimum viable content of an SBOM. We call this the baseline SBOM and it consists of a list of seven elements. These will re be reviewed in the next slide. It should be noted that this baseline SBOM is a goal for most but not all use cases involving SBOMs. The report outlines several use cases where more information would be needed. The overall goal is to collect as many of the baseline elements as possible with the eventual target of providing all seven baseline elements or more depending on the intended use cases. However, as with most things, we don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. So providing some information is always better than providing none at all. In addition to the description of the baseline SBOM, the report also covers some key processes such as how and when to create an SBOM. Art, please walk us through the structure of the SBOM. One of our goals was to des design a model about what an SBOM looks like and how an SBOM works. In the phrase one framing group work, we developed a model for what an SBOM looks like and how SBOM components relate to each other. This first picture is a graph where the nodes in the graph are software components that relate to each other in a supply chain. Starting on the left, we have component parts, which are included in compound parts made up of different component parts. And finally, on the far right, a final good assembled. A user or a consumer of a software system most likely sees the final good assembled, what's missing today and what's hidden and what should be exposed by better SBOM transparency data is all of the component parts within that final good assembled. In addition to the graph concept, it's also possible to represent this information in a table. So this graph and this table represent the same information. These two pictures hopefully help explain the conceptual model of an SBOM and how components relate together. In practice, there will be so much SBOM data that it won't fit on a screen, and we will need tools to produce, consume, and exchange SBOM information. Fortunately, the NTIA process has a working group for that, the Standards and Formats Working Group. Once organizations have a better grasp of their inventory data, there's still the question of what to do with that information. The Use Cases and Practices Working Group has a document that covers some of these use cases, my favorite being vulnerability management, but others also include license management and high assurance. In our second year, as we move into phase two, we're going to explore some of the unresolved problems that we addressed in phase one, along with a few new ones that have propped up. It turns out that globally identifying and naming all software components is a difficult problem, so we continue to work on that one. We're looking at how to share and exchange SBOMs. As part of the global identification and naming problem, we're considering supplier identification. In our SBOM parlance, a supplier is someone who produces a software system and therefore produces an SBOM. And our working group is also working hand in hand with the healthcare proof of concept working group in an attempt to test and validate the models we've designed in the framing working group with a real world test in the medical device manufacturer space. Our working group is open to anyone to join. We welcome new membership. Thank you for your time.